But the important thing is, is that we're just hours away from the inauguration. Fox News has been reporting the Secret, Secret Service has expanded their their boundaries a little bit, and they're making sure things are locked down today. Tim Jones called in earlier, talked about some of the roads being blocked off around uh, the Capitol building. Uh, they're creating a safe zone before they let people in there tomorrow for this inauguration. We're honored right now to be joined by United States Senator Roy Blunt, uh, who is headed up one of these inaugural committees, making sure things are ready to go for tomorrow. Uh, uh, Senator, thanks for joining us. Hey, Mark, it's good to be with you. We are busy today. This is uh, uh, the committee that I chair. I'm the chairman of the, the committee on the inauguration itself. So anything that happens at the Capitol, including uh, the zone around the Capitol and people, uh, when they, 250,000 ticketed people coming in and going through screening. And, you know, my goal there has been and continues to be that uh, when people leave here tomorrow uh, after the after President Trump is sworn in and and um, they begin to leave, they'll feel like they had the maximum freedom they could have, and, and still have the security that people want to have at events like this. Uh, so there'll be 250,000 people in that group, and at least I would guess another 500,000 people outside that ticketed area, stretching back maybe as far as the Lincoln. Uh, Memorial, and uh, I've seen uh, President Trump uh, about three times in the last three days, and he is ready to get to work. Are there any security concerns going into tomorrow? Sure. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I haven't. I don't know. I don't know what this would be like <laughs> if you were the chairman of this committee and you weren't on the Intel Committee, and sure. I've been on that that committee for a long time, and there are lots of security concerns uh, every day. I think you know, there's no question that the actual target, the appeal of having the, the the Supreme Court, almost the entire Congress, the new cabinet, uh, four former presidents, the new president, all on a little piece of real estate outside at the same time is pretty great. But at the same time, uh, you know, you have an opportunity to prepare for that. And uh, we've had great uh, support from uh, uh, the um, Capitol Police, one of the biggest police forces in the country, is the Capitol Police Force, uh, and uh, uh, the D.C. Police, in addition to that, and the Sergeant at Arms. And uh, that's been probably the, the single biggest consideration of how do you how do you have people here and have them here uh, safely? So we have every reason to anticipate a safe day because we plan for everything that uh, hopefully uh, could possibly happen and how to see that that doesn't happen is really we each send to the world a message of stability of a democracy that uh, that beats what anybody else has ever been able to do. You know, we've we've done this every four years since 1789. Uh, and um, you know, President Reagan said in 1981 in his uh, first inaugural speech, he said, "What we do here is commonplace and miraculous." <laughs> yeah, and it's miraculous because we've made it seem so commonplace. Nobody's been doing this as long as we've been doing this in terms of the peaceful transition of power. Uh, George Washington believed that the the inauguration of the second president would be a lot more important than the inauguration of the first president. And why would that be? Because somebody would actually be willingly giving up power, <laughs> stepping aside for someone else to take that responsibility. Uh, and you know, the third president, the third president, even more so because uh, uh, when President Jefferson took over, the people that had supported President Adams thought that they were giving the government to someone who had a dramatically different view of what government should do than than what they thought was the right view and. Uh, a lot of historians think that was maybe the first time in the history of the world where one group of people willingly, if not enthusiastically, gave control of a government to people they considered their opponents in every way, ideologically, philosophically, politically, uh, and we just have continued to do that. Uh, Senator, with that in mind, what are your thoughts on these 60 Democrats who decided not to show up tomorrow? Well, everybody, you know, it's not like missing a vote in the Congress. Uh, I, I, I would prefer they were there. I think that the example we send to the world is one of respecting democracy. Uh, I think if our side uh, had lost and 60 Republicans didn't come, there'd be a huge outcry about that. Uh, but 
you know, the, the world's going to go on, and there are going to be 1,600 people on that, that platform, and, uh, uh, you know, missing a few dozen members of the House of Representatives won't make a difference in terms of people's sense of how significant and important this event is. Uh, and uh, some of these very same uh, individuals have uh, uh, not shown up for Republican presidents uh, to be inaugurated in the past. Uh, and uh, I think the message we send here is really important. Forty million, maybe 45 million people watched the inauguration of the President of the United States live. Millions of others listened to it. Millions of tens of millions of others watch it at some time later in the day, and millions of people all over the world watch this. It is it is a significant moment uh, because of the example it sets. And you know, everybody who sort of walks away from that example, um, I, I think, makes a mistake. But they don't make a mistake that minimizes the uh, the democracy itself. You know, we're we're never afraid in our country of. Uh, of uh, peaceful protest or people who are unhappy, and there's no, no constitutional requirement you show up to see the president nominated, but I, I sure uh, have always thought it was an important place to be no matter who was being inaugurated. Sure, that's a good point. But I did have this question. I'm not trying to get into the minutiae with you. Mm-hmm. But if these 60 if these sixty members uh, all had seats assigned to them and they don't show up, they're not going to be 60 empty seats in the front row, correct? That's exactly right. Okay. So you're there are just... lots, lots of people who would like to have those seats. <laughs> so if they don't want them, you're going to get them filled up. Tim Jones said he'd take a front row seat if you've got any available. <laughs> well, you would think the former Speaker of the House would qualify for a front row seat, but I don't think that's in the planning right now. But I, I do believe Tim Jones has a pretty good seat. Yeah, I, I, I got that impression, too, from talking mm-hmm. to him earlier. I did. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate your time today. Senator, I know you've got a lot going on. Um, uh, we appreciate your efforts, and we're looking forward to the inauguration tomorrow. I am too, Mark. I'm I'm optimistic that uh, things need to change, and uh, President Trump brings a synergy to this that is he is such a different uh, view of what the government can and should do and how it gets it done that those of us who've been on the side of change feel like we've got an ally uh, coming to join us. Yeah. Are you disappointed at all? One more question about the confirmation hearings and the the pace of them so far. Well, no, I, not really. They could have been a little bit faster, but I think we uh, we will confirm a handful of uh, the president's appointees tomorrow. And uh, uh, if uh, there was no friction in these hearings, uh, President Trump would have probably uh, nominated several of the wrong people. There are three or four of these departments. Uh, that uh, business as usual is nowhere close to good enough. And, uh, uh, you know, because of uh, Harry Reid, all these people can be confirmed with 51 votes. It doesn't take 60 votes. And uh, I I suspect unless something happens that we don't know about right now that they'll all be confirmed, and that will all happen within a matter of a couple of weeks. Very good. Okay. Uh, Senator Roy Blunt. Mark. Yep, See thank you. you. Yep, Bye. thanks. Bye. I know he's got a lot going on today. Said he's met with the uh, president-elect several times over the last couple of days. And, um, wow, w- what a job. I mean, he's basically in charge of uh, of the committee that has got to pull that event off tomorrow. 250,000 people ticketed, and he thinks another 500,000 are going to be in D.C., some of whom are going to be people with ill intentions. So I, he laughed out loud when I asked him if there were security concerns, but I think he knew what I was getting at. Are, are there specific threats? And, you know, they're probably not going to discuss that if there are. Uh, 